Welcome to my presentation on planning geometric microgrid layouts using genetic algorithms. My name is Max Göttlicher. Together with Matthias Wolf, I wrote this paper. In my talk, I will first give a short introduction of the, into the problem with a motivation and then give a proper problem description before we go on to see how we can find the actual topology using the genetic algorithm. For this, we will also compute a cable assignment for a given topology. Finally, we will see the experimental evaluation of this method. So as a motivation, imagine a rural community with no electric network and with small industry and houses and possible generator locations such as places where a hydroelectric plant can be installed or wind turbines can be placed. The triangles should represent these generator locations. What we want to achieve is a network that connects all the terminals as cheaply as possible. And the obvious way which comes to mind is using a minimum spanning tree. However, the minimum spanning tree is not the shortest possible total connection. What we can use instead is insert additional Steiner points and then use those to reduce the total length. What we obtain now is the minimum Steiner tree. However, in an electric network, not all cables have the same cost. On some connections, we might need higher capacity cables and those are more expensive. So in this case, the installed network on this topology might look more like this. However, if we consider different diameter cables with different cost, the actual cheapest network is not a minimum Steiner tree. Instead, it might look more like this. I will talk about how we can find such a network in a minute, but before, we will define what we're actually trying to solve here. For the microgrid cabling problem, we are given a set of terminals with load and generation data and positions, and also a set of cable types, which have a cost per unit, an opacity and a resistivity. And we have additional cost factors such as the distribution nodes and poles, where we might need to install additional equipment. We also are given the maximum power loss and voltage drop, which are acceptable in the network. And as an output, we expect a radial network with Steiner points and connections. And these connections are assigned cable types each. We optimize for cost. So we want to find the minimum cost layout. And the cost consists of the cost of cables, poles, and distribution nodes. The minimization is constrained by the cable opacities and by the power loss and voltage drop in the whole network. We solve this using a genetic algorithm because finding such a cable assignment and topology is NP-hard and a meteoristic is a good way to solve NP-hard problems for which no dedicated algorithm is known. It also has the advantage of covering a large search space relatively efficiently and being easily extensible. One major disadvantage which is it shares with other meta-heuristic methods is, is that it's prone to local minima, where it can get stuck, and also that it has a lot of different parameters which need to be tuned for a problem. Our approach is to make use of the fact that the fitness evaluation is seen as a black box by the genetic algorithm. So what we do is we compute a cable assignment for each topology the algorithm produces and use the cost as fitness value inside the genetic algorithm. However, computing a cable assignment on itself is NP-hard. We can solve it exactly using Gurubi, However, this is too slow to be useful in a genetic algorithm. What we use instead is a heuristic, which makes it a lot more feasible. We then compute the exact cost 
only on the final solution of the genetic algorithm. In the genetic algorithm, we have to adapt a few steps to our problem setting because they are dependent on the problem structure. The first such step is the initial population, where we want to set up the net genetic algorithm with a set of initial instances. These instances should be trees and they should also represent possible networks. The easiest way to do this is to permute the vertices which produces a path. However, this is far from optimal because it is quite long, it has a lot of crossings and that is mostly undesirable for a network. A much better approximation is using a random spanning tree which we draw from edges in the Delaunay triangulation. Or instead we can also insert random Steiner points and compute the minimum spanning tree on the vertices and the additional points. However, this method needs further refinement because some of the points can be removed safely and are redundant. What we used through most of the algorithm is the spanning tree method. The next step in the net genetic algorithm would be to evaluate the fitness of all the individuals. As said before, we compute a cable assignment for this. However, this step is a bit more complicated, so I will go into detail later. The next step after this is selecting parents for crossover. Parent selection is a generic procedure which does not depend on the project on the on the problem structure. So what we use here is tournament selection, where we draw a small group of topologies and choose the best one as a parent. We repeat this as often as parents are needed. The next step after this is crossover, where we mix the genetic information of two parents. This has the goal of recombining the good parts of different solutions and to achieve this, we want to make sure that our crossover method is able to preserve local structures and also that the child graph is a tree, because otherwise it would not be a feasible solution. What we do here is we use subject crossover, which is a new method. And what it does is choose a random subtree in one parent, then combine it with Steiner nodes from the first parent and connect the vertices to form a spanning tree with edges from the first parent. We, we then remove redundant edges and Steiner nodes and have a tree without redundant edges and Steiner nodes, which is a feasible solution for the topology. After we compute an individual, we have to subject it to mutation. Again, this needs to be adapted to the problem structure. The goals of mutation are to explore new topologies and thus to escape local minima. Our approach uses separate operators for the edges and for the Steiner points, which are applied sequentially. For the edges, we choose a random edge and then choose a new endpoint close to one of the endpoints. This new endpoint can be an existing terminal or Steiner point, or it can be an edge center, in which case we insert a new Steiner point. These possible new endpoints are chosen randomly but weighted by the distance from the original endpoints. We also have to ensure that we break cycles we create in this process and to keep the graph connected. The second mutation method considers the Steiner points, where we actually have two different methods. The first one of these minimizes the total weighted edge length and the weight of each edge in this case is the cost of the assigned cable type per unit. But unfortunately moving the Steiner points may change the required cable type because the cable resistance may change when we move the Steiner point. Also this method does not account for the poles which are placed in discrete intervals. So we have a second method which is applied with a certain probability and this method moves one Steiner point by a random distance along the edge towards one of its neighbors. This should be seen as an additional refinement. It can also be used on its own, but it converges a lot slower than also using 
the weighted edge length minimization. After this, we have a population of child individuals and parents, and these two need to be recombined. What we use here is elitist reinsertion, which again is a generic operation. It uses the best parents and fills the population with children until the desired population size is reached. Next, I will explain how we can compute a cable assignment. So first, what do we want? We are given fixed topology for and a set of cable types, and we want to compute the minimum cost cable assignment on this fixed topology. This is constrained by the cable opacities and the maximum power loss and voltage drop in the network. The cable assignment assigns to each connection a cable bundle, which is a cable that can be applied multiple times. We use a heuristic because cable assignment on its own is also NP-complete. And our heuristic computes an upper bound for the current in each cable and uses this upper bound to compute the maximum cable resistance depending on the voltage drop along each path and the distribution of power losses in the whole network. The actual current may be a bit lower in most cases, but we don't use scenarios and see this as an upper bound. However, this heuristic does not yield the optimal result even considering this restricted model. So what we can do is we can iterate over all edges and if it is possible to choose a cheaper cable, we just choose the cheaper cable if it does not violate any of the constraints. This is a greedy improvement and still does not yield the optimal result. This can be computed using Gorobi and a mixed integer model. However, using Gorobi is much slower than the heuristic even with the greedy improvement. In our experiments, we wanted to evaluate the algorithm if it is guided by the heuristic. And what we did here is we chose a set of adapted Euclidean Steiner tree benchmark instances with 10, 20, 50, and 100 terminals. These instances were taken from the Dimex 11 challenge, and we extended the instances with randomized load and generation information. We also used a real-world example of a microgrid in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. To find a good set of parameters for the genetic algorithm, we also conducted a parameter study, where we tested a lot of different combinations of mutation rates and population sizes for the genetic algorithm. With the best set of these parameters, we then conducted our experiments to assess the quality of the genetic algorithm. First of all, to evaluate the solution quality, we asked two questions. The first one is, how much do the cable assignments cost on the topologies which the genetic algorithm produces? compared to other topologies such as the minimum spanning tree and the minimum Steiner tree. And the other question we asked is how consistent is the genetic algorithm in producing these results? Because a more consistent result indicates that the genetic algorithm is closer to the global optimum because it is less likely in this case to find a better local optimum. In this plot, we see the results, which we obtained by choosing 50 random instances from each benchmark set, which was run 10 times in the genetic algorithm, which was limited to 60 seconds, which is a short time, but on the other hand, this is useful for semi-interactive planning procedures where the algorithm is embedded as an intermediate step. In the plot, we can see the results where we normalized the cost by the cost of the minimum Steiner tree, which was always higher than the cost on the other topologies because the minimum Steiner tree contains quite a lot of distribution nodes where the cables branch off. 
and we have quite a high penalty for those so the cost of these topologies is higher. What we can clearly see is that the genetic algorithm, which is the lowest two lines, the purple and the orange one, is much cheaper than both the minimum spanning tree and the minimum Steiner tree. Interestingly, it does not make a great difference if we use the heuristic with or without greedy improvement. This is interesting because the greedy improvement is, is much closer to the actual minimum cost, as we will see later. The next experiment we conducted was as to assess the variation of the solution quality. For this, we took the same experiments, but now we computed the standard deviation of the results on each individual instance and divided it by the mean cost to obtain a comparable result. So what we have now is the relative deviation of the standard deviation from the mean cost. And what we can see quite clearly is that the greedy improvement produces a much more consistent result, especially in the case of 20 terminals, which is the green line. However, in the case of 100 terminals, the greedy solution ran into the timeout a bit earlier after fewer iterations because the greedy heuristic takes slightly more time than the basic heuristic. For this reason, the results are less conclusive for the larger instances. However, for the other instances, we can clearly see that the greedy heuristic produces a standard deviation which is below 1.2% of the mean value for more than half of all instances with less than 50 with less than 100 terminals the average is also below 4.5% so what we can see is that the greedy heuristic produces somewhat more consistent results we also tested the cable assignment heuristic to evaluate its performance. And what we can see here is the, the, the performance of the cable heuristic on instances with 20 terminals on which we computed the minimum Steining tree, the minimum spanning tree and, the, and a random spanning tree and computed a cable assignment on these topologies. What we can see is that for the minimum Steiner tree and the minimum spanning tree, the heuristic produces optimum results in almost two thirds of all cases when we also apply the greedy improvement. However, the results are slightly worse if we only consider the random spanning trees. However, even with that, the worst instance is less than 1.25 time more expensive than the optimum cost to which the cost is normalized in this plot. We also compared the output of our algorithm in the HV instance, which was kindly provided to us by engineers without borders Karlsruhe, who installed a microgrid on the island of Ijwi in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. What we see in the middle is their manually planned layout and on the left the result of our algorithm. And what we can see is that with our model our algorithm produces a cheaper network layout. However, there are a few constraints which our algorithm does not consider, which were considered in the manually planned layout. These are that Maybe the selection of cable types should be restricted to fewer ones and also that there might, might be other restrictions to the cable layout such as houses which are in the way or rivers. 
and other factors which we did not consider. So the results are not entirely comparable in this case. However, we can still see that the result is quite close to the manually planned one in many ways and that it is probably a usable one. So what have we seen? We have seen a genetic algorithm for microgrid cable layouts that is capable of producing useful solutions in relatively short time and is guided in that by a fast heuristic for cable layouts which, is compl which, which complements the optimum solution which can be computed using Gorobi. Possible extensions in future work are to extend the algorithm to also cover mesh topologies and to compute more accurate cable assignments, for example using a scenario-based power flow model. Another possible extension is to incorporate hard and soft obstacles such as houses around which the cables are routed. I hope you found the talk interesting and thank you a lot for your attention.